All right. <laughs> You're doing great, Dalton. You're doing good. I had like two good right. racks. The racing. How far are we going to? That's car. <laughs> That's too far away. Just to where the cul-de-sac opens. I got it. How are you doing this, dude? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling is an ancient game that has persisted into the modern era. There is no single originator of the game, and it seems as ubiquitous as childhood itself. Historical evidence in painting, on pottery, and in oral traditions from various places in the Americas, Africa, and Europe show children and use rolling, racing, and throwing objects through large rolling hoops made of metal or wood since antiquity. For hoop rolling, you're going to want two things. A stick that's about a foot long around there, and a hoop. It does. The hoop should be fairly large. If you've seen historical pictures of hoops during hoop rolling, they are about up to the kid's waist. Now, historically, this would have been made out of wood or metal, but this is not an era where large hoops of metal and wood are easily available, and hula hoops are. If you look up modern playing of hoop rolling, you will see people using Hula hoops, it works just fine. Alrighty. There were a lot of different games you could play with hoop rolling. The common yeah. was just to keep the hoop up for as long as you could. But another very common way to play hoop rolling was to race against somebody else. <laughs> All right, you dorks, ready, get set, go. But why work through the process of rolling a hoop along with a stick for entertainment? It's not a particularly difficult process to grasp, even if, as me and my siblings show here, it is a little bit difficult to get the hang of. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. You were doing so good. It's the wind. It's the, no. The reason I find working through hoop rolling as an enlightening as a historical process is that it's ubiquity since antiquity means that play has always been a vital process to children's intellectual and emotional development even in times and eras where children were expected to work and earn money for their families, and play was not as valued as it is today for children. Oh, how did you do it? I might do it better this way. <laughs> Why are you better that way? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you so good at it that way? <laughs> as me and my siblings tried out the various ways to play hoop rolling, we started to experience learning as play. This means as we started playing, we started out testing new physical skills and tricks, cognitive reasoning and problem solving, and rely relying on social skills to learn this process. I could only imagine children, teenagers, young adults, and the young at heart in different parts of the world and in different time periods coming together and joining a game of pushing a hoop along with a stick, laughing and learning together. Play is often a form of learning, and as educational experts have noted since the 1970s, play is used by children and adults for testing out ideas, for abstracting information, and for somehow operating on this information later in life. As someone who works in a natural history museum where play is strongly encouraged in most of our exhibit spaces, I see the ways in which children and their adults learn and abstract concrete and abstract concepts through their play. I think anyone in public history sites should look into see how we connect people to the past through play, whether it be through creative exhibit design or through literally playing games that our ancestors did. Okay. Now we got a good stick. <laughs> like a lot of sensory history, playing these games will not gift us magical insights into the past or really reveal anything that new or different but it will allow for people to creatively engage in public history sites and give a more concrete connection to people in our long ago past.